Okay, here we are. So, just by looking at a few of you in the audience there, I can tell you that you're going to be predisposed to experiencing a greater chance of musculoskeletal injury in conjunction with higher levels of stress. Okay? And I can tell this just by the way that you're sitting there with the posture that you have. So that's exactly what I'm here to tell you, talk to you about today, is posture. Okay? Something that your parents have been telling you about since you were a child. Sit up straight, keep your chest up, keep your shoulders back. Okay? If your childhood was anything like mine, then these are familiar phrases to you. Now, what I want to do is pose a simple question to you. And that question is, why is posture important? Okay? You probably haven't ever asked yourself that before. Why is it important? Is it because having good posture looks good, but having bad posture looks bad? Is that the only reason? Is it because having bad posture makes your back and your neck ache, and having good posture doesn't? Well, it turns out that the ramifications of having bad posture are far more profound than any of these. So much so that I've devoted the focus of my career to studying this, okay? So what I do is I'm a personal trainer and I specialize in something called corrective exercise. Basically what I do is I help my clients identify their muscular imbalances that are distorting their posture, okay? It's a process of identifying muscles that are too tight and strong, also identifying muscles that are too weak and long, and then doing specific targeted strengthening and stretching exercises for those muscles. Through this process, I'm able to dramatically improve my client's position, okay, and subsequently their lives. Now, I own a brick and mortar facility where I do this with clients, and I also own an online co coaching business where I do this with clients all over the world. Now, it turns out that posture regulates almost every physiologic function in our body. Okay? Everything from blood pressure, sex hormone levels, stress hormone levels, confidence, cognitive functioning, um, lung capacity, and predisposition to injury, amongst other things, are all things that posture influences. Okay? How crazy is that? Posture influences these things. How can something so seemingly simple have such a profound impact on our lives? Okay? Surely we can do better than this. I think we can all agree on that. Um, so, what I want to do before I move forward is ex give you some context and explain to you how I first became involved in postural improvement. So like many of you here today, I've been a student all my life, and I've been sitting all my life too. I sat in elementary school, I sat in middle school, I sat in high school, and then I came to this university and I sat some more. Okay? <laughs> Basically, I spent a lot of time working in these hunched positions, okay? working at my laptop, reading books, secretly texting and Facebooking my friends in class and underneath the desk. I spent a lot of time here. Okay? Now, it's also important to realize that I was always an avid athlete. Okay? Always have been. And when I was in college, it wasn't any different. When I was in college, I would work out about six days a week. Okay? So I would oftentimes go from sitting in class in these hunched positions here to going straight to the gym where I would do this, you know, for another three hours, okay? And eventually what happened as a result of this, as a result of this chronic hunching and these repetitious exercises that I was doing at the gym, is I developed something that I call the bro physique, okay? And that is this, okay? Huge lats and chefs, but this rounded up the back, okay? You probably know some people like that, maybe some athletes. <laughs> Now, the technical name for this is thoracic kyphosis. Now, I knew my posture was bad when I was 19, 20, but I didn't care because I was jacked, right? <laughs> if people looked at me, they would say, hey, that guy is in shape, he's healthy, okay? People without postural awareness and awareness of things like biomechanics would say those things, okay? Um, so yeah, like I said, I didn't care. I was jacked. It turned out that this perspective was a big mistake because when I turned 20, I started to experience injury after injury, okay? And I had no reason why. I couldn't correlate these injuries with anything, okay? I was getting stronger and stronger in the gym, but more injured and damaged in the process. And this kind of all culminated into a catastrophic injury that I experienced when I was 21, where I tore my labrum in my shoulder, which is a piece of soft tissue that's critical to shoulder movement, 
Before that, I had to have reconstructive surgery on my shoulder, and this put me out of the gym for about a year. Okay, I couldn't even use my shoulder really in any capacity for a whole year. And obviously, having been an athlete all my life, there was a profound contrast between the, how I was living now, being bedridden almost, uh, at least for a couple weeks after my surgery, and how I was living before. Okay? Um, I started asking a lot of questions. Why did this happen to me? How did this happen? How could I prevent this from happening once I got better, once I healed? Okay? And I searched for these answers in, in uh, two related fields. I looked to posture and something called biomechanics. Okay? And what I soon learned is that our bodies are much like machines, any complex mechanical machine. There's an optimal way for everything to line up in order to function properly. Okay? Our bodies are a little bit different in the fact that biological tissue can repair, heal, and regenerate, but the physical forces acting on our bodies are not that much different than that of any complex machine. Now, if there's misalignment in terms of static posture, posture that you have and you're not moving, that any and all movements made with that posture are going to cause increased wear and tear to be placed on your joints. Essentially, static posture is akin to the alignment in a car. You can often drive 1,000, 3,000, maybe even 10,000 miles on a car with misalignment. Okay, the misalignment is not going to obstruct you from driving. It's not going to stop you from driving. However, due to that misalignment, there will be a mechanical breakdown in the future. Okay? Key takeaway here is that if your body is not optimally aligned and your joints are not positioned properly, then it is literally just a matter of time before you experience a musculoskeletal injury. Okay? Not if, but when. Now, it doesn't matter if you're an athlete or a student reaching up on a bookshelf in a library to grab a book down. If you have structural uh, alignment that's compromised, your movement is going to be compromised and your orthopedic health will follow suit. Okay, so that's the mechanical perspective as to why posture is important. Okay, that's the, me the mechanical viewpoint. Now I want to talk about how posture actually regulates and influences your hormones. Okay, but before I do that, I need the help of two of you in the audience there to come up on stage here and stand in two postures and I'm going to ask you a couple questions. So, um, I need some volunteers for this, so anybody willing to come up here, just raise your hand. Preferably some people close to the stage here. If nobody raises their hand, I'm just going to start calling people. All right, you can come up here. You can come up here too, maybe. So yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to put them in certain positions, ask them how they feel in these positions, and then I'm going to ask you how they look in these positions. Okay? So, we'll start with you. And you're just going to hold the position that I put you in here. Okay? Just stay there for just, it'll just be like 30 seconds. So. What I want you to do is this, that, and bring your feet all together. All right, good. Go ahead, stay right there. And you, I want you to do this. Maybe get your feet wide. Yes, lift your chest up and squeeze your shoulder blades together like trying to pinch my fingers. Good. Yes, okay, not excessive, but yes. Good, hold that. So, now I want to ask you how you feel in this position. Awkward. Feel awkward? <laughs> yes. I mean, it looks pretty awkward. Um, do you feel confident in this position? No. No? Not at all. Do you feel like you can work effectively in this position? Nope. Nope? All right. How do you feel in that position? A little strained. A little strained? <laughs> all right. That's probably because you're squeezing a little too hard. You relax a little bit. All right? Just kind of hold this. But be a little bit more easy on yourself. But how do you feel overall? Pretty good. You feel good? You feel like you're, you can be effective? Yeah. You feel confident in this position? Yeah. Okay. Now, you in the audience, if you were a employer, oh, I gotta get back. If you were an employer and the only criteria that you had to judge these candidates on was their posture, which one would make a better hire? I know that's a little unrealistic, but just by looking at them, who would make a better hire? Okay? <laughs> I mean, I think it's obvious. All right, you guys can go sit down. Thank you. So, uh, let's give them a round of applause. bad to doing that to her because I know what I just did to her, her inner chemistry, okay? And I'll explain that to you right now. Back in 2012, Harvard did a study on two different types of poses, and they referred to one set of poses or postures as high power positions. They also contrasted this against another set of poses that they referred to as low power poses. 
Essentially, these high power poses were characterized by expansive stances. Okay, stances that took up a lot of space. They were characterized by externally rotated shoulders, chest lifted. Okay, this is called spinal extension. These were essentially examples of good posture. Okay, now they compared this to low power positions. Low power positions were characterized by narrowing stances. Okay, things that made people smaller, internally rotated shoulders, and flexed spines. Okay? Does this look familiar to anybody? <laughs> All right? So, low power versus high power. What they figured out is that putting in their candidates in these high power positions increased their testosterone by 25% and decreased their cortisol in, uh, by 20%. And this happened in two minutes of, of taking this posture. What does that mean? Testosterone is your male sex hormone. Both sexes have it, males have more of it, okay? It's responsible for things like confidence, assertiveness, and dominance. In the study, they actually refer to this hormone as the dominance hormone, okay? So both sexes have it, but that's what that uh, hormone is responsible for. The other hormone, cortisol, is your stress hormone. This hormone, when you have it in excess, causes feelings of stress and anxiety, okay? You need small amounts of it, but when you have a lot of it, it causes you to be stressed out. So. By putting yourself in these high power positions, this is the takeaway here, or one of them at least, putting yourself in these high power positions actually changes your inner chemistry in such a way that it makes you feel more confident and assertive and dominant and less stressed out, okay? The study went on to find that there was an inverse relationship with these low power positions, okay? So, the, essentially the key, the biggest key takeaway here is that Bad posture makes you more stressed out and less confident. Good posture makes you feel um, m more confident and less stressed out. Okay, and this is happening on a systemic level. Okay, with your hormones, it's not it's not just a uh, perception thing. Okay, as, as most people are familiar with posture, um, this is happening to your hormones. So, what I want to do now, moving forward, I've supplied you with two of the biggest reasons why posture should be something that's on your radar, why posture should be something that you're addressing. Okay? It's something, something that you simply don't want to be ignoring. Okay? Now I want to talk to you about things that you can do today in the audience right there, tomorrow, the next day, when you're at work, things that are going to work to improve your own posture. Okay? These are things that I share with my clients, and I have them do these things synergistically with the corrective exercises, such as those specific strengthening and stretching exercises, okay? So the first thing that you can do right now and, in the, and when you're at work is be aware of your head positioning, okay? So the most common thing that I see is something called forward head posture, which is characterized by your head being in front of your, your center of gravity like this, okay? Now the reason why this is bad is because your head is essentially a 14 pound bowling ball sitting on top of a stick, okay? If it goes forward like this, over time, gravity is going to continuously push your head down, and then your whole spine is going to warp into that bro physique thoracic kyphosis. Okay? So it's not going to just stay up here in your neck. It's going to warp your whole spine forward like this over time, which, as you know now, is going to compromise the uh, orthopedic health of your shoulders and your neck. Okay? So one thing you can do to fix that while you're sitting there is tilt the chin down and then push it straight back like that, like you're trying to give yourself double chins, okay? Don't lift your head up or keep your chin up, okay? Push the chin down and then push the back, okay? Now what that does is it stretches the muscles back here called the, the cervical extensors. These muscles push your head forward and it strengthens these muscles which push your head back. These are called the deep cervical flexors, okay? You can also use that as a corrective exercise as well as being aware of your head positioning while you're working. Do it as a corrective exercise to make some long-term impact during your exercise routine, meditation routine, whatever you do, whatever physical movement routine you have, you can make this a part of it. And you just lay on your back on the ground, tilt your chin down into your chest, and then push into the ground. Okay, you can hold that isometrically for about five sets of 30 seconds. Okay? And you're gonna feel a nice, like kind of uncomfortable uncomfortable sensation in the back of your head. Those are those neck extensor muscles stretching, okay? Take it easy at first, don't do it too hard. Um, the second thing I want to share with you is um, a technique to address your shoulders. So, you know, as I'm sitting here talking to you, I've seen a lot of you adjust your postural position. It's like, oh no, the posture guy is coming on stage. Gotta sit, <laughs> gotta sit in your posture. 
And what I see a lot of people do when, I, when they find out that I do this is they'll pull their shoulders back like this. Okay? Raise your hand if you've ever done that before. Okay, so like almost all of you. So I'll tell you why that's not very effective. The reason why realizing that your, your shoulders are falling, falling forward and then pulling them straight back is not effective is because you're not addressing the soft tissue restriction in the front of your chest and shoulders here. Essentially, you have a bunch of soft tissues here pulling you forward, okay? So if you just pull your shoulders back, you are not addressing that restriction. And it's going to be very uncomfortable to hang out here with your shoulders back. Okay? Not only is it going to be uncomfortable, but as soon as you get absorbed back in your work again, you forget about your shoulders, they're going to fall right back forward. So what you can do is something called a shoulder roll, and this is how you do it. You do this right out there. You push your shoulders forward, kind of round them in, elevate them, pull them back, and then depress them down your back. Okay, that's the key part. Press them down the back. Okay? And now what you'll find is that it's actually easier to hold this position. And this is why. What you just did is you pulled the soft tissues back with your shoulder when you did that. Okay? You kind of ratcheted them back a notch, if you will. Okay? Now it's a lot easier to hold this position. I think you can all agree with that. Um, I wanted to share some more with you today, but I'm approaching the end of my timeline here. So let's come full circle and talk about posture again. What is posture? Okay? And why is it important? Posture is how others see you. Posture is a direct manifestation of your attitude. Posture is how you perform and posture is how you feel. Posture is a measure of how effective you are in the world. With good posture, you have the power to prevent common aches, pains, and injuries. Just by hacking your posture, you have the power to boost your confidence, lower your stress, improve brain functioning, and a lot of other things that I didn't get to talk to you about in depth today. Okay? At the end of the day, you're not a hermit crab. Okay? You can't just get up by your body and leave and go to another shell. Okay? Your body is your home. Take care of it. Thank you.